silence so each of us can reflect on our own faith and its place here in our work today. stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May 14th, 2018, we have a regular meeting at Akron Elementary at 7 p.m. On May 20th, 2018, the Building Trades Open House at Dwayne and Janet Hackler's home. So that is uh, 1 to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, June 11th, 2018, regular meeting at Mentone Elementary at 7 p.m. And our July meeting will be July 9th. So we'll be a regular meeting at Mentone Elementary at 7 p.m. So we'll move on to the Spotlight on the Valley. The first item that we have, Adam, is to welcome and introduce some new employees. And I think that I see three here tonight. If I've missed anybody, let me know. But uh, I'd like to introduce you again, Pearl Meyer. You know, and you're an athletic director. I'm looking forward to here in a little bit. So, you know, welcome. Uh, any, any words of wisdom you'd like to share with these folks tonight? Maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and your family. Uh, I brought my husband, Grant, and my daughter, Andy, with me tonight. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Very honored to be chosen as uh, athletic director at Valley High School, and I'm looking forward to working with our administration, our coaches, our student athletes, and our community. So thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. Boiler up. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. Not this time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also have an employee with us tonight, Lori Selden Geiger. Lori is our new director of uh, marketing, public relations, and grant writing. Anything Lori would like to share with the group? Um, I started last Monday and it was a whirlwind and um, I could not be more excited. Um, we've got some great things going on here and I can't wait to help you tell the story. Um, it was see that I'm here tonight because I, I was hired first um, for Valley back in 1985 to work at Menton School. So it's like coming back home and um, I'm just really excited to uh, be here. Thank you for the opportunity. And not a new face, but she's going to be a new face in a different place. And that is April Stiles. And April is back in the back 40 there. Uh, April is our max teacher in the middle school right now. She will become a school counselor next year. So, April, anything you'd like to share with us tonight? Um, no, I wasn't expecting to speak in front of everyone. Um, <laughs> but I'm really excited for my new position. And it'll be my first year as a counselor at the middle school. And I'm looking forward to it. Did I miss anybody? Spotlight on mental elementary school. And I think turn over to the several several young people who like to recognize them. Yeah, yeah. All right, it's good to see everybody and uh, see a lot of good bulldogs here tonight. Uh, we have quite a few groups and people we'd like to recognize. So let's start with student council. And uh, Mrs. Rock, if you'd come up and uh, talk to us a little bit about everything Mentone Student Council uh, has done this year. So we've been really active, have a great group. Those shirts look good, guys. Okay, this is Rob's has a little clip <laughs> for us first before we start here. I 
know what? We'll go ahead and do our thing, and then maybe we can end with it. Okay. I am the student council sponsor for um, Menton Elementary. And last year, we decided to join the Indiana Association of Student Councils. And as a member of that association, there are certain expectations that come with it, things that our student council had to do and requirements that we had to meet. And I'm just really, really happy to tell you that we did what they expected. And at the end of last year, we were named an honor council for the state of Indiana. So our kids put forth a lot of hard work. And, um, each year you kind of step that up. And so this year our student council has collaborated with other groups within the school to do some of our projects. And one of the, um, I guess, perks of belonging to the Indiana Association of Student Councils is that they have summer camps and workshops. And five of our fifth graders, this year fifth graders, attended leadership camp at Manchester University last summer. And a large number of our students also attended a leadership conference in March. So they are getting a lot of opportunities outside of our building to practice and learn more about leadership as well. So we start our year in the fall, and we, our student council is made up of third, fourth, and fifth grade representatives. And within the council, then they elect officers. And because we had five kids who went to Manchester last year, those students were automatically named to student count as student council representatives, plus the elections. So we had a really nice number of fifth graders this year and some really great leadership skills. But one of the things that really, um, I guess, moved me was how well the third, fourth, and fifth grade worked together. They really collaborated well. And I would like to tell you that our fifth graders um, embraced, I felt they embraced everyone. And recently we had a conversation about what we wanted to do um, in regards to teacher appreciation. And it was actually ideas from third graders that were voted on and chosen. So I think that's just a really good um, example of how well our kids work together. Um, we had a lot of projects going this year. And this is one of the years that we really needed some parent involvement and help and I would just like to say that I really appreciated the parents who stepped forward and helped us and so we have some student representatives who want to come and tell you about some of the projects that we did this year. I'm Holt. I'm a fifth grade representative. My student council year started with four other fifth graders when we attended the Manchester University Summer Leadership Camp last year learn team building and leadership skills. Recently, most of our Minton representatives joined Akron Student Council in a leadership training at Akron. TVHC Student Council members helped lead the workshop. Student Council has been busy this year. We recycle paper every Friday. We, lead the, we led the pledge at our Veterans Day program. This year at Minton, we collaborated with the high school student working on a KYLA project to promote a diversity week in Minton. To go along with diversity week, we also had a coin drive and raised $100 for the Juvenile Arthritis Foundation. Student Council has sponsored many spirit days this year. We, also currently, we are also currently selling spirit wear. Student Council partnered with our special events committee to put on a skit encouraging students to do well on ISTEP. We are also planning to promote teacher respect during Teacher Appreciation Week in May. Thank you. 
Chamber of Commerce Festival to have a treat. Our tree we, was purchased for $100, which was also donated to Helping Hands. It won third place by a popular vote, and we, and we received $50. feel welcome. That's an ongoing project that's going to carry over. And it's been a great year working with these guys, and they really have worked hard. So you guys, I appreciate all the work that you've also done for our student body. And in the event, if you missed it, someone said we were selling spirit wear. If you haven't seen that, I do have some order forms if you would like to order some spirit wear.
All right, student council, thank you. You know, it's amazing how fast a year goes and all the different things you guys did, you know, throughout the course of the year. That was really, really cool. Uh, we also now have our Mentone Math Bowl team. Uh, our sponsors were Mrs. Ryman and Ms. Medley. And so if you could come up uh, here at, up front and talk to us a little bit about uh, our Math Bowl team and how they did and all the things that you guys did. Thank you. Thank you. We now have our Spell Bowl team, and uh, Spell Bowl takes place in the fall, and uh, they compete in a uh, regional competition at Wabash, just like our math club does. And so uh, Spell Bowl uh, team co-sponsors were Mrs. Sellers and Mrs. Cody. So ladies, if you please come up and talk to us just a little bit about Spell Bowl. said we compete in the fall for spell bowl um it's hard because we're competing against girls who are in volleyball and boys who are in basketball so it's hard to get kids here to practice but we had a lot on our team that would go straight from spell bowl practice over to volleyball or vice versa um so they worked really hard this year we came in fourth at competition at wabash um they worked 
very hard. Like I said, we had one that had a near perfect score with six points out of seven words, so they did awesome. Um, they study 750 words, um, so we study about 100 words a night at practice, and then um, they take those words home and study them, and then they um, take a practice test on the computer the next day, um, or at our next practice to hopefully at least have seen the word before we get to competition. So they work very hard to learn those words. Um, and we'll read all the names, but I don't think we have everybody here today. We have Noah Spangle, Blaine Sheets, Brooklyn Swindell, Ethan Young, Evan Bullinger, Lindsey Peterson, Colton Crabb, Kaylee Frenzel, Madison Thompson, and Austin Wallace. Kaylee, before you make it to your parents, if you could come back up and then you don't want to, okay. No. Well, at least Kaylee, stand up for us at least, okay? Well, she's the brown-haired girl sitting by her father in the back. Uh, and uh, Colton, if you'd like to stand up for us. Uh, Kaylee Quintanelli, uh, one, our Mentone Spelling Bee. And you know, there's not a lot of people uh, who can say they won their school spelling bee. And uh, Kaylee did that, and so we're very proud of her as she represented our school. Uh, Wawa C, I believe at Milford, and Miss Medley was there, and so uh, we're just very proud of her for uh, winning the school spelling bee. And then Colton Crabb finished uh, in second place, and so a couple of very good spellers. So we wanted to thank both of you, Kaylee and Colton, and Kaylee for uh, representing us at Milford. Thank you so much. Excellent job. Let's go. Okay, and then uh, Mentone Reading Club, and I don't see Mrs. Lewis, so I think that's me. Uh, so I'll tell you what, if you were on the Mentone Reading Club here, if you'd like to uh, come up, uh, Mentone Reading Club is a wonderful club. Uh, Nash, go ahead, come on, you can, if you, if you join, if you're on the club, please come up, uh, all you club members. And uh, again, we have quite some missing things. Guys, I'm gonna let you go ahead and say your names nice and loud in the mic. Colton Crabb. Sienna Holder, William Malott, Lindsay Peterson. Okay, and to be part of the reading club, uh, there is a certain criteria of books and things that you have to read. It's uh, rigorous, and uh, we're proud of our students uh, who achieved this honor. So congratulations, guys. Let's give them a nice round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Boggs asked me to briefly uh, just mention uh, some school goals and things, so uh, I will be brief in this. This is something I could spend a lot of time on, uh, but just uh, a few things here uh, regarding Mentone, uh, and so just a few slides here. Uh, we're very proud of our school in the year 2016-2017. Uh, Mentone was awarded a letter grade of an A, and so we're very proud of that. And that, that really showed a lot of hard work with our staff and students, and so uh, they did a very, very nice job. Uh, and that was from the uh, state. And so we're always looking at things that uh, we could improve on and uh, just efforts made throughout the year. And so throughout the year this year, uh, we really were refining, refining as grade levels, uh, just looking at essential learning standards uh, that utilize uh, some of the PLC questions about what to do when students know things, when they don't know things. Uh, and so asking those questions, how do we respond uh, to student learning? Uh, utilizing our PLC process is something that's very important. Um, instructional leadership team that we had has studied uh, and discussed math fact strategies as well as how to increase student reading vocabulary and that's very very important uh, in terms of understanding what you're reading and things building that vocabulary up. Um, implementation of Project Lead the Way uh, that is our science curriculum that we've adopted and we're looking right now uh, how to really incorporate that and build up good units of science study uh, this next year. Uh, we had, we did implement the uh, Project Lead the Way uh, this year with Miranda Feiger who did a wonderful job modeling uh, how to implement that program. Uh, creations of standards-based report cards uh, in third grade. 
We are going to standard space report cards uh, corporation-wide, Akron's joining us. Uh, we're up to third grade this year, and we're, I think we're going to tackle fourth and fifth grade this next year. And so uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, we built in first grade reading interventions and uh, really saw a good spike in our uh, reading in, in first grade uh, readers uh, and how they're doing the reading overall. And then establishment of family groups among all mentone students. And so parents, if you want to, you can ask your children about family groups. We meet once a month uh, to uh, do a lot of various just projects together and things. It's a, a very, very neat system. Uh, future goals and just areas of focus uh, going into next year. Um, we have, and that's just refine how we use our success time and how to utilize uh, uh, PLC models even more. Um, establishing a good structure for our science curriculum and create good units of instruction for science specifically. We'll try to get to social studies as well. Um, we're enhancing our ability to utilize student data to impact classroom instruction. Uh, so back in the old days when I was in school, I'm getting grayer and grayer. Uh, for example, but a teacher in math might have said, okay, turn to page chapter 51, and then you do chapter 52 and 53. We didn't take into account what the students actually knew. So there were times in math that I, I knew what chapter 52 was before we even looked at it. Um, and then chapter 53, I didn't have some of those skills that I needed. So we're looking at that and really making sure our instruction really fits where our students are at and differentiating. Um, we have clarified vertical articulations among our curriculum and things. That's something else that we need to do uh, to make sure our uh, curriculum is vertically aligned. Um, we're looking at peer-to-peer -peer professional development. Uh, that's just watching teachers next to you that are really good in certain areas. Um, of uh, teaching and learning from each other. And then, of course, researching and improving a school culture. Uh, we want to be a school that's empathetic and welcoming, while at the same time really establishing high expectations and really trying to meet uh, both uh, ends of that. And so those are a few things that we'll be looking at specifically for next year. And so we thank you, uh, school board, and thank you all your parents uh, for coming out and joining us uh, this evening. I know we have some more board meeting left here, so uh, uh, we'll see how you guys want to do that. But thank you on behalf of all our students and things, guys. I hope you've had a really good year. It's hard to believe it's almost over. So thank you so much for coming out. All right, we'll move on to recognition of the recipients of the Indiana Humanities. We have some individuals here tonight that collaborated to receive the One State, One Story Indiana Humanities Grant for $1,000 for the Frankenstein Celebration of the Human I think uh, we'll let the uh, Corporation Media Specialist Andrew Michael share the rest of it with you. So. in the library corporation wide really and we have the Indiana Humanities Grant to thank for that. The purpose is really focused on Mary Shelley's 200th anniversary of the classic Frankenstein. We hope to explore the themes and the ideas and focus on the moral and ethical responsibilities that we have as a society in regards to technology. We really want to try to bridge the gap between the humanities and STEM. I don't know if any of you saw the 60 Minutes episode several weeks ago and there's an entire polo Club, a whole pool team based on one cloned horse. We now have cloned about 20 different animals, most recently the monkey, who's a primate kind of like human. So it's kind of amazing to me that 200 years ago, Mary Shelley pondered some of these things about bringing things to life, and just because we can do something doesn't necessarily mean that we should do something. You might be thinking, you know, why Frankenstein, but the president of Indiana Humanities worded it really well, and if you've never read Frankenstein, it is a very powerful book that raises some really big questions about what's right and wrong, about how we treat each other, and about the relationship between science and technology. Locally, our school corporation will be joining Actor Carnegie Public Library and Bell Memorial Public Library, but we are really only one of 70 different nonprofits all across the state of Indiana that will be joining together to celebrate this classic book. At Akron, the Carnegie Public Library, we will be seeing The Science of Frankenstein on October 25th. We will hear about the story, we will hear about what scientists were doing at that time and how it inspired Mary Shelley when she was writing the book. And we will also get to see some demonstrations of light, anatomy, and electricity. There will be a Jacob's Ladder there, a static generator, and a Tesla coil with 750,000 volts of raw electricity. 
One of the things they requested along with the grant was a good old-fashioned book discussion. So we have seven students at the high school that are willing to meet with students and families who will come to view a movie night and not only compare the book to the movie, but compare different versions and twists of the books that are out there as well. Finally, we have some reading clubs in each of the buildings, and these students read. We just saw them at a reading club, and they were reading the Indiana Young Hoosiers. Next year, we will be throwing Frankenstein into that mix. Those students in the reading club go above and beyond by reading those books outside of their classroom curriculum, so it really is an extra amount of added work in there. But at the high school, we will be reading the original classic. Shelly Engel will be leading that in her English classes there at the high school. At the middle school, we will be reading an adapted version of the classic, and Jane Hunt is willing to incorporate that into her science program and discussing science ethics. At the elementary schools, we will be reading the adapted version, also some twists of the book, and some picture book versions. We have a student, Grace Smythe at the high school, who is involved in graphic design. She will be designing next year's Reading Club t-shirts with uh, Frankenstein with a Viking helmet, symbols of electricity, and then the theme, Frank is in the Valley. So we really hope for some honest discussion, some collaboration, and some ethical introspection in the choices that we make, not only in everyday, but in life. Thank you. thinking, uh, why wait until that time? Why not get started early? And, and then all the lives that could be affected up till that time. So I started doing some research, and it doesn't take much money to get a scholarship started. $10,000 gets it started, and uh, $20,000 gets it uh, where it will go forever. So uh, uh, we started it, um, and, and Kurt's memory, perfect example in ag, got the thing requirements there, so anybody's eligible for it. Uh, but we're also asking for more money. We got it to about eleven, about twelve thousand dollars right now, and I just secured a five thousand dollar mat, up to five thousand dollar matching. Uh, one business, Sylvia's the church group, said they'll throw in five thousand if I could raise five thousand. So uh, um, some of you guys in businesses might be getting a call here pretty soon. But uh, we can get up over twenty thousand. That secures a thousand dollars a year 
for uh, some uh, for a student to go to school. And so if we can get 40,000, then we can do two students. And so we got a lot of big goals. And so we're getting started. So if any of you want to put some money towards it, if you put money towards a scholarship, your, your children are still eligible for the scholarship. It doesn't prohibit you from anything there. So that's, oh, and the last time I was in front of the board was about this time in 1986, asking the, you guys to have Bob Dubois stay a couple more years. It worked out pretty well. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping this is going to work out the same. <laughs> with a couple sections. No, Neil, thanks for doing this. I mean, not only for those benefits, kids for years in college. consent agenda. Number one, approve the minutes of the March 7th executive session. Number two, approve the minutes of the March 12th, 2018 regular meeting. Number three, approve the hiring of the following personnel. Lori Tilton Geiger, Director of Marketing, Public Relations and Grant Writing at the School Corporation. April Stiles, School Counselor at the Middle School. Gina Hurlmeyer, Athletic Director at the High School. Uh, Alan Ames, full-time custodian at the high school. <coughs> Number four, accept the resignation of the following personnel. Darren Parker, business teacher at the high school. Nick Tierney, special education teacher at the middle school. Brian Raber, social studies teacher at the middle school. Number 
five, accept the retirement of the following personnel. Onda Ryman, fifth grade teacher at Mintone Elementary. Debbie Potter, the school nurse at the high school. Rod Hammond, math teacher at the high school. Number six, approve the out-of-state professional leave request. Number seven, approve the overnight trip for the middle school and high school wrestling teams. And number eight, approve the 2018 summer school. Gentlemen, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as read? I'll make that motion to approve the consent agenda as read. Brian makes that motion. Do I have a second? I second that. Todd seconds that. Do we have any further discussion or anything you'd like to pull out for discussion? No? All in favor of the consent agenda as read, state by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, state by saying no. Motion carries. Going to uh, business items, approval of claims and payroll. Thank you, Adam. We have one pre-written claim <laughs> listing this evening. It's dated March 31, 2018, in the amount of $788,481.13. Our regular claim uh, listing is dated April 16th of 2018, and it's in the amount of $118,072.11. Then we have three payrolls this evening. The first is dated March 2 of 2018, in the amount of $380,835.32. The second is dated March 16 of 2018. And it's in the amount of $394,593.67. And the third one is dated March 29 of 2018. And it's in the amount of $399,445.23. And I submit these claims and payroll for your approval. Do I hear a motion for claims and payroll? Make that motion out. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Is there any discussion on claims and payroll? Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion as read, state by saying aye. 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 All opposed, state by saying no. Motion carries. On the financial report. Okay. The school board has been provided with the reconciled bank statement and the monthly financial report of funds for the month of March 2018. Uh, in summary, our receipts and disbursements for March 2018 are Total receipts for all funds, $1,573,970.36. Our total disbursements for all funds, $2,151,610.90. Thank you, Brett. Looks like we don't have any old business tonight, so we'll move on to new business. Number one, accept the Indiana Humanities Grant. Yes, you uh, heard a presentation by Andrea Michael earlier about the <coughs> grant we received uh, from the Indiana Humanities. Um, really a very nice uh, collaborative project with both of the libraries, and Akron Mentone, and really uh, appreciate Andrea taking the leadership role in that. So uh, we're asking you um, tonight to go ahead and approve the, uh, the grant from the Indiana Humanities uh, for $1,000 to Tiffany Valley. Do I hear a motion to accept the grant? I'll make that motion on it. I'll make some motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay. All in favor to accept the community's grant, stay by saying aye. 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 All opposed, stay by saying no. Motion carries. We do accept the uh, donorschoose.org project funding. Yes. Um, thanks, Adam. Minton Elementary School has students who are at a variety of levels on the uh, academic spectrum. And this is Kathy Olson. Uh, serves a number of these students who have various needs. So in order to provide the best education possible for all of our students, Mrs. Olson has been active in writing grants to obtain tools that will enrich the lives of her students. Uh, with this grant uh, for the project, teaching that learning can be done by using our hands, Mrs. Olson has secured funding for her students who need to access curriculum with assistive technology. And I believe, Mrs. Olson, that uh, you wanted to talk a little bit tonight and uh, let these guys try some of these things that you have to I did. Um, we want all our students here at Timothy Valley to be able to access the curriculum, but I have um, quite a few students that have some challenges health-wise 
or physically that they cannot access, access the curriculum like other students. So I've been doing a lot of creative grant writing in the past two years and the Donors Choose organization has been very helpful in getting these grants for these students. Um, some of the items, I laid them out on the table, I don't know if you had a chance to touch them or look at them while, we, while you were getting ready for the meeting tonight. Um, the first one is just simply a sensory item for a student. You could use it for calming. They could use it for massage. Um, you just you press on it for a little. Yeah, this is really because But it can help them focus and pay attention. And it just vibrates. Okay, so that could be an attention thing that they use. Um, I have a student that um, she has very limited mobility. I have two students with limited mobility in their hands. Um, they can insert their hands into this muff. On the outside, it just looks like it's a hand muff, but on the inside, there is a ball that um, the first time I put this in her hands, she was kind of like, wow, what is that? I saw her thinking. I saw her asking questions. She cannot talk, but I saw her thinking. And I saw her processing. And this was very exciting. The other student, he also was very curious about what was inside of this mitt. And then there's just other things that they can touch and have sensations and work with when they're doing this. You all have, about all of you have a switch in front of you. If you at least one at a time hit the switches, can you go ahead and hit the next one? And then hit the other one. Yep. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have to hold it down. And then if you want that one down. Okay, there's four different songs on there. What the children can do with that is they could pick a favorite one after they've listened to all four. Then they have to remember which switch it is. I could give them a direction. I have different colored um, switch covers that I can put on there. I could say, touch the blue one. That for me, I would know without them verbally having to tell me that they know what the color blue is. So there's a variety of teaching activities I can do with that one tool where I can, I can even put cover plates over them and put numbers on them and say press number two. There, it's just it's an immensely helpful tool for us to use. I see my fidget has been picked up. This would be for my students out in the classroom. It's just as simple, it looks like a bike chain. And that could be something to help them focus in the classroom and they could fidget with that. I have some more fidgets over here. They have uh, marbles on the inside, and that could be something while they're sitting in class, you know, quietly fidgeting with this instead of messing in their desk or being distracting in the classroom. So um, these two items, Mr. Boggs has the one, are calming tools where a student that needs to calm down fits the, or I have um, some other students that this could just be, you know, fascinating to him to look at the colors, and he can maybe describe colors to me, Mr. Boggs is very calm by this one, <laughs> where you just flip it over and it slowly goes down. I could use this as a timer for a student. I could say in this amount of time, and that's something they could visually, you know, look at and see. Um, I have a switch plate here where my students with um, the limited mobility, they can hold this down and watch that move. Now you might think, oh, well, that's not that hard. But for some of my students, it's very hard for them to hold anything down. So this gives them some other mobility practice and um, engages them in an activity. I have one more item. This looks like just a simple ball, but it makes noise. Um, the one day when I put it in my one student's hand, he loves to take everything apart. And he has been really analyzing this and trying to figure out how to get it apart. And so I know he's thinking and he's processing. It, it, he can play with it, but he has been very curious about how to get this to, apart. And so far he has not, and I don't think he will. But we're engaging him in that he's thinking and processing. So thank you all so very much for letting me entertain you tonight with all my <laughs> different tools that um, I got through this very creative grant for the students that I work with in my room. Can you tell us? Kathy, yeah, tell us a little bit about the process that you use with DonorsChoose.org. How does that work? Um, DonorsChoose is an online organization. I went and made a web page, I think, two to three years ago. Um, Ryan Smith over at Akron got me started on it. And um, you set up your website and you put a project online. 
and donors from all over the world can donate to your project. Some of them are private donors, you, you may never know their name, and some of them, their name is listed. I've had donors from New York City, I've had donors from Florida. Um, when we finish the process, I have to submit online six pictures of the students using the items that I purchased. We write thank you letters and mail them to the individuals that um, sponsored our project. And then we, I write an impact statement after we've had a little bit of time to use the tools and explain how my students were using those to help with their education. It's fairly simple. Um, mostly grants under $500 is your best bet to get funded. Over 500 is a little bit more difficult, but uh, it's been fairly easy. I think this one was my fourth project, and I have a fifth one pending that I guess I get to come back and talk to you about next month. So. We'll, about it. well, thank you for your work in obtaining these things for our uh, students. I'm sure they, they appreciate that. Thank you for so much. So uh, we need a motion for two. <coughs> Do we have a motion for the donors choose not work project? I'll make that motion to accept the donation to the donors choose it. Do we have a second? Yeah. I'll second that. All in favor of that, state by saying aye. 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 All opposed, aye. state by saying no. The motion carries. Go on to the ex accept donation by yeah. the light screen. Is um, either Catherine Scott or Beth Stutzman? Uh, okay. Um, Catherine Scott and Beth Stutzman are uh, parents of middle school students, and they're both employed by Daylight Screen. Uh, each each has a daughter in eighth grade, and uh, their employer, uh, Daylight Screen, offered them the opportunity to donate a ten by six, ten foot by sixteen foot prototype screen to an organization of their choice. And since they both have girls headed to high school next year, they decided to donate that to Tippecanoe Valley High School. So uh, we have that in our possession now, and certainly would like to thank those uh, ladies for thanking of Tippecanoe Valley. Um, I know those screens are not cheap, they're quite expensive, so we, we appreciate it, and uh, would ask the board to go ahead and accept this generous donation by Daylight Screen. We have a donation or a uh, motion. <laughs> motion for the donation. I'll make that motion. We have a second. A second. All in favor? Stay by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Stay by saying no. Motion carries. Move on to number four: presentation of the 2018-2019 Automotive Services Technology Class at the High School. We're excited about the, uh, the new class coming to the high school next year. I've asked. Mr. Craig, our high school principal, and Ron Acosta, who is the director of the Warsaw Area Career Center, to come and talk to us a little bit about how that's going to work. Thank you. So, thank you. Um, this is my ninth year, so it's going to be my eighth year from the beginning of my ninth year. And that entire time, two programs were frequently requested by many, many people. One being cosmetology, the other one being um, automotive. And so one of the goals that I've had is somehow to be able to bring those opportunities forward for students. And I'm really excited that next year for the first time in many, many years, our students are going to have an opportunity to uh, be involved in an automotive program. So last, last month, I know that you met uh, Mr. Hoyt, so we're um, excited about having him on board. I just wanted to give you a little brief um, look at what the automotive program will be. I'm not going to read that first paragraph to you, but this is a program really it's for two years for 11th and 12th graders. Um, they will come in and it'll be three high school credit hours, but hopefully, um, anytime you start something new, you always have big goals. And this time I'm going just tailor it back a little bit. Um, somewhere between nine and 12 college credits. So in, until we run the program full steam, I'm, I'm confident we'll get through nine college credits. I'm really gonna push for us to get through all 12 college credits. So there's four courses, basic automotive services, electricity one, braking systems, and engine fundamentals and repair. So it's really exciting. So if the student completes 
uh, next year we'll have some seniors in the program and they complete they can move right on into their second year of automotive at IU Tech. Um, the goal is to, for them to leave with their automotive tech certification and move right into employment. So I'm really excited. Um, currently I've met with uh, Mr. Hoyt and he is this week actually going to Ivy Tech. He'll spend time with the instructors um, that run the program at the college level. Then he'll spend the rest of the afternoon um, at another career center um, just beginning to help him build a, a collaborative group of peers that he'll be able to work with and draw upon. Um, he'll go to the local automotive program in Wabash next week. So I want to at least get him into four different career centers that are currently running automotive. Um, we have an established advisor board already, so we'll be uh, pulling those individuals back together, uh, presenting with a list of equipment, supplies that we're going to need to start the program because some of them may be willing to donate. So we'll go for some donations first, and then um, I wrote a rule grant um, back in the fall, and so we have a significant amount of money to get the program started. So purchasing of all the equipment and materials that we're going to need to get it up and running. Um, sending schools, so it will take place at Tippie Valley High School, and then sending schools will pay tuition um, to attend and attend that program at Tippie Valley. Um, currently, we have 15 students at Warsaw Community High School that are planning to come to Tippie Valley to take the course. So I just think it's a really good uh, collaborative effort. Uh, I know that. Um, Wednesday chat. So Mr. Kreif and I uh, have collaborated back and forth and he has about the same amount of students at um, Tippy Valley. So we have a full program right out of the gate, which didn't surprise me at all with the volume of requests that we've had. Um, I, we, we have 11 right now signed up for the afternoon. That'd be periods 5, 6, and 7. And right now we have three that are signed up in, uh, for the morning and we'll be able to kind of offset that with the uh, students who are coming to the war. So it's a perfect fit uh, right now. Those numbers are pretty solid. Um, we're, we're about that point of schedule, we can say that, that seems to be about what we're going to have. Uh, and so I, I'm hoping to convince, no, I'll put this, where's the, where's the news guy? Don't put this on this. But, <laughs> but I'm hoping to convince Warsaw to send a bus once a day. It's a three period long, like, since we have so many students, if we can get them mostly in the morning, I'm pretty sure I'm going to hopefully be able to, we'll just bring them, um, pick them back up after the three period class is over. Uh, moving forward, it will be very important for the board to establish a budget for the automotive program uh, where we can write grants for equipment. There will be just your ongoing maintenance cost in, of running an automotive program that you'll want to establish a budget for. Um, any questions? So I really feel like it's a, it's a, it, is, it is so exciting. Um, and I will work diligently with the instructor. I just want him... I think we've hired the right person, and that's really, truly the most important part of starting a new program is the right person. Uh, he speaks two languages. Uh, he's, you know, I think he's going to need professional development. He knows how to run a successful automotive shop. And now we've got to teach him how to be a great um, teacher at the too. There, there's a definite buzz in our school, too, just to have it. Um, you know, just to have another option. Uh, a lot of the kids, um, you know, took all the, you know, elected and you kind of get to that point, like, what else do I want to take, what I want to do, and so this was a definite uh, need, and the, the kids are very excited. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Ron, for your work in putting yes. this together. This, yes. is, this will benefit our, our students and our community. Yes, that's, that's very great. Thank you. And if you have an opportunity in switching subjects, but for cosmetology, we have uh, the first group that are getting ready to graduate, but the group that is there right now, it is such an inspiring place to be if you walk in there. So if you want to go get a trim or a little facial or manicure or anything, I really encourage you to go there. And maybe next year we'll be saying, get oil change or your tires rotated. <laughs> we have four students graduating uh, at oh, yes. oh, yeah. Notre Dame here in May. Yes, we have four students who will graduate with their technical certificate. So they will walk across the stage at Notre Dame. Um, before they walk across the stage at, at Tippy Valley. So. And that certification really is, is a ticket. Yeah. Pretty good job. They have a line of they have a line of requests for their services. They will not have a hard time getting employed. As well as I believe there are four senior graduating seniors that are in the current 
um, machining two program that are graduating, and they're going right into industry. So they'll have a, they'll have just an amazing opportunity. They will make more money than a beginning teacher right out of right out of high school. That's something to grasp. Yeah. Lots lots of opportunities for students through Career Center. We've really talked about the shift. It's important. Um, Academics is important in graduating from high school with the best credentials that you can, but really focusing on you need to graduate with a skill. If I want to be a teacher, graduate with construction so I know how to build a home or machining or just let's embed that curriculum with the skills that when I walk out I have a skill to actually do something and that makes me way more employable in the future forward. I recently read on the front page of the Warsaw paper about the welding competition that several of our, our students participated in. Yes. How, did, how did that go? Um, we, we tend to win, which is what I like to do. So <laughs> when uh, we are number one, we're ranked number one out of there are eight different um, categories that the state of Indiana ranked us, and I like us being number one. And when I say that, that means the students at Warsaw. City Valley and Whitco, and it's all coming together. Like I look at us as one um, large group um, of career tech at it, and so we consistently come out on the top. So our welders, it, they're driving nicer trucks than I am. Um, so. <laughs> There's one he's really getting under my skin because he just bought a boat too. Um, you know, if you can master the skill, really. It's your work ethic that's going to drive you forward. And speaking of that, we are in the process of, we've, uh, my assistant director and I have spent the last uh, several months uh, working with many, many people in industry to establish a work ethic certification. And that is, uh, the next step is to meet with the educators and tweak it, and then uh, we will meet with students, but hopefully next year, uh, Kosciuszko County will have a countywide work ethic certification. And they've actually changed the name. They don't. They want to call it a work ready certification because they want you to have the skills ready when you leave high school. To so go. if I'm a student, for me to get that certification, what does that mean? I have to do. That means you have to have a 90. I believe it's 97 percent attendance rate your senior year. You have to have no significant discipline referral. Um, you have to have. There's a whole list of criteria that industry said was important and so um, I, I don't have it all memorized but I'm sure it will come before you in the if it's not the next board meeting the one after that to say you, each school corporation will get to decide if they're going to join the goal is for all seniors next year to have an opportunity to start with a clean slate and you have the opportunity to earn this your senior year so and if I we'll walk into the, an employer with that certi certification what, what does that do for me? In every every um, employer industry has had an opportunity to write down what perks they're going to offer. So Zimmer may say that, and I don't have them all memorized, but I have some. Zimmer may say that you get uh, preferential treatment in terms of your um, application. You're going to get first interviews. Um, you're going to get access to their gym. They like list of. Each company has an opportunity to list all the perks that if you walk in with this, you will receive as a work ethic recipient. And that will be listed on the back of um, the certificate that each student gets. Um, so we're hoping that it only will work if industry makes the rewards significant enough to change the behavior. Sure. So I don't want to get up and go to school, but I want that certificate, so it's got to drive me to change behavior. Um, I want to get in an argument with that person who's annoying me, but I want my work ethic certificate and that will take me out of the running. So I worked really hard um, with industry the, over the course of the winter to say, what perks are you moving forward? So those are all coming to fruition uh, right now and then I will bring that. I look forward to hearing more about that when it's all And I meant to present that on Friday at the work um, Change the meeting. Is there any questions for Ron while we have her here? Super. Team Valley is wonderful, and you guys are doing a great job. So I'm excited to 
to work with Chad and get this automotive program just the talk of the town. Well, one of the best things we did was start running a bus up there, and that has increased the number of students that we have participating in those classes. Yeah, it's been a good thing, too. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to uh, reviewing the revisions to the student, staff, and athletic handbooks for the 2018-2019 year. This is the meeting at which uh, we asked the principals to come and present to you the handbook changes uh, that they're proposing for the 2018-2019 school year. So uh, we have several here. We'll start with uh, Mrs. Mills or Mr. Dobbs. Sure. Mr. Well, Dobbs, looks like you're That's a tough question. question. <laughs> I just wanted to say real quick, it's hard to follow Rana, but I, I just wanted to thank, you know, Vonda, we have some giants that are retiring um, this year from Pitkin Valley. Vonda, if you could stand up real quick. You have just given so much uh, to our school system and things, and I won't say how many years or anything, but uh, quite a few. And, you know, her car is here when it's late at night and things and, and working hard, so I just wanted to thank her for everything she's done for Mentel and everything. So, we would miss if I didn't recognize her. So. Thank you. On a little less exciting topic, maybe, but uh, handbooks here. Um, we really feel, you know, how's this? I mean, at Acromento, Chrissy and I, um, that, you know, our handbooks, we feel good about them and things. So we don't have a lot of major changes or anything to consider. There are some obvious updates um, and things that you'll see, but overall, um, a lot of the same kinds of things. Um, I know in um, uh, society and things, as we're looking at some student handbooks, there are some things right now that we're kind of looking at, um, you know, even things that like vaping, you know, things like that, that we're wanting to put in our handbooks just to make sure we have them in there to cover, you know, everything that might come across, you know, our desk and things. But uh, overall, you know, you'll see uh, just, just some, uh, you know, uh, just maybe a few things, but not anything uh, too significant, I don't think. Uh, uh, we work work hard on our attendance policy and things. That's one thing that uh, we're really working hard to get on the same page with in terms of Akron, Mentone, the middle school and high school and things. So uh, we're taking a long look at that and things and, and really put some work into that. Um, through this, we looked at uh, some different things in terms of uh, truancy and, and uh, just how to really get a really good conversation as administrators on how to deal with some of those absences, you know, and, and things. Now, at high school, you know, you have a whole different issue versus at elementary level, a lot of times parents are the ones who are making some of those decisions. Um, and sometimes, you know, at school, I'll see kids walk in at 10 in the morning and people didn't set alarm clocks, you know, things like that. So how to really effectively deal um, with some of those kind of issues that come across to us and things. We're really lucky at Valley because that's not a big percentage, uh, you know, and things, but of course, there are some that uh, do want that attention and things. So we've taken a real long look at, at some of those things, some of the consequences, things like that, that we're trying to uh, tweak and things. So, um, other than that, um, food service, um, you know, in, in terms of our, our student lunch, uh, meal accounts and things, uh, just a few uh, uh, in terms of clarifying charges and things and, and uh, some of those kinds of things uh, that we're looking at. So. Uh, one thing that is changing with our standards-based report cards, I will tell you next year, we have uh, things in terms of scales and things like that. Uh, those things, I would say, by the end of ne by next year at this time, we'll be asking for standards-based report cards that will go all the way up to fifth grade. So, which that's a much more accurate report card. Um, for example, I could say you got a B in math, but a standards-based report card will say here's exactly where your child scored in this specific proficiency. So in dividing decimals in fifth grade, this is where your child's at in that particular skill. So the standards-based report card offers parents a lot more, how should I say it, specific information rather than just those general grades and things of that nature. So um, school safety, um, we're asking, we uh, installed a Raptor uh, security system uh, that our school board here approved. And uh, just another real feature in things to make sure our students are safe. Um, and, and it just gives us another, another tool, so to speak, to do that. Mrs. Mills, if I'm missing anything, let me know. I think you've done it all. Yeah, sure you did great. <laughs> <laughs> well, they haven't asked any hard questions yet, so yeah. Okay. That's it. Uh, I believe with the uh, student union. Our staff handbook, uh, once again, just some uh, general updates and things. Um, 
I don't think there's anything that is too uh, different in terms of uh, last year, in terms of expectations and different things. No, I really, yeah, I don't think there really is much to talk about. So, really, just updates on that. So, okay. Any questions uh, from the school board about anything regarding the super second books at the elementary level? Okay. So yeah. Is it in the book that the principals wear purple when they come to the school board meetings? Great minds taking a lot. We try to make as one uh, elementary one. Yes, like yes. That. <laughs> Uh, Randy, I know uh, I just wanted to see where we was at on children that are out of money or forget their lunch money or something. What do we do for those students? Sure. For those lunch goes. Sure. Yeah, we are. They are able to charge, you know, and things to it to a certain extent and things. Um, we do try to work with parents uh, and things on that. Um, I know both our schools do have a couple of different outside groups. You know, we don't like to. Promote this at all, but you know, I mean, exactly. we, we do have some that you know. If we feel a situation, you know, sometimes what we ask of as principals, I think Mrs. Mills is the same. Is if you come in and talk to us, you know, sometimes you know we'll have people come in that'll look at me and say, I, I had one woman, woman uh, last week who you know works at a fast food restaurant, and she said, I am so sorry, I'm behind on this. And you know, if you can say, hey, if we can work out a way to make payments in things that are in small increments, we'll work with you on that. And so we, we really try, if people are honest with us and come in and, and, and talk with us, we'll do our best to really work with them because we don't want to just, you know, short the kids. You know, that's, exactly. that's, that, that's what can happen. Does the kid get something like a peanut butter or something oh, yeah. for that day? Regular. Yes, yeah. they get a regular. regular. Okay, they get the meat. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to punish the kids and things. Good. Anything else? That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Backus, what would you like to start with? Uh, well, the athletic handbook doesn't have any changes. Coach's handbook, the only change in the coach's handbook is the addition of requirements for soccer, having added the soccer program, which is 2-0, by the way. They beat Peru 6-1 and beat North Miami 9-0 in the first two matches. So, so if it quits snowing and they can play this week, then we can do it. So. Uh, staff handbook. So, the majority of the changes in all of our handbooks deal primarily with some school safety things and then the, uh, the, the look at the attendance policy. So, in my staff handbook, page six, we, just, we added an addition uh, of the Raptor system and the visitor policy. And this is the same wording that you'll see in. Um, in all the handbooks, so basically the first the first sentence is just about um, our visitor policy and the expectation people come in the front door if they're going to make a plan to have lunch with children. We generally don't let parents in the lunchroom with everybody else, but we'll make an accommodation where they can uh, have a room and eat if they call us to plan ahead. Um, and then the fact that we got to use the Raptor system to get in the building. So um, if you go down to page 12, just an addition in the staff handbook that we now mandate uh, sexual predator training that we have to do every year along with the bloodborne pathogens. So just a statement that at the beginning of the year when we um, kind of go through our checklist of all the things we have to do annually, that's just one more piece that we've got to do with our staff. Um, some changes as far as wording and scheduling. We're not an eight period day anymore, we're seven periods. Uh, on page 16, we just we specified a little clearly for teachers the requirement on uh, distribution and collection of textbooks. Um, again, nothing revolutionary, just updating some things. And then if you go down to the very last page, um, so just scroll all the way down to the end breath. There's a few spots in here where we're just we're changing some wording on things, but um, the last page is the calendar. Go up uh, one more, sorry. In the staff handbook, we just added the, uh, the addition of, of PLC roles. So this is just a statement of how our PLC teams are represented in our school improvement team. And then the page above that is just a, a flowchart of what all the roles are for our um, 
expectations for our PLC one meetings, but that's all that's in the staff handbook. So any questions on any of those? Let's do the classified staff one, Brett, real quick. It's uh, it's primarily the same stuff. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't know that there's anything in there that we didn't just review, but classified handbook would be what goes to my paraprofessionals and folks that uh, are support staff for us. So it's just, it's a lot of the same expectations, but it's just a, a lot less in focus. A lot of it doesn't pertain to them, it does the teacher. So, student handbook. We added the visitor policy on page six, and then if you go down to page six, Brad, that the visitor policy is there that we just talked about, and then attendance. Um, the four principals um, sat down together and we really went through the attendance policy and looked to make sure that we're kind of on the same page with what we're doing. And one of the main reasons that I requested we sit and talk with this is because starting with the 18 19 school year, attendance is going to become part of middle school's accountability score. And for every kid that's not at 96% attendance or better, we're going to get dinged for it. So we want to have some things in place to be able to address that and to make sure that we're getting our 5% of that letter grade score with our attendance. And I'm not sure if attendance is gonna plug in for you guys, but that's gonna be a, a new piece for us at the middle school. On top of the test scores, we're gonna have attendance and our English language learners test scores from, from the read test figure into what our letter grade is now. So um, the main change there on the un unexcused and undocumented was just a really defining what truancy is specifically. Uh, I think for us the word resonates a little more and I know for the high school that was a focus they wanted was to make sure we're really talking about what truancy is when kids are choosing not to come to school and then on the chart below adding that first line that um, you don't have to have six unexcused absences before consequences kick in. If you have one unexcused absence we can do academic recovery, which is what we call it in middle school, which is you stay after for an hour and do some work to make up that time. I think high school is talking about probably an high school component for those things. So just being able to have a little bit of teeth in our attendance policy, knowing that we're going to get dinged from the state if we have a large number of kids that aren't meeting that 96% threshold of attendance. So um, that's probably the most significant change. Um, if you go down to page nine, we did update the, the school closing information. This still listed that we are closed system that we used to use. So if you go just below that, Brett, there's a new statement from Mr. Lang just about how to get signed up for the, the auto call and what resources you can go to to make sure that you know what's going on with school cancellations. Um, page 11. Um, it may have gone down a little farther. With agendas, we just clarified some more in there. But if you go down, probably page 12, maybe, yeah, the backpack policy. So when Mr. Connolly and I started at the middle school, we changed schedule. Um, we, we limited the passing period to four minutes. And one of the things we tried to do to help kids with the shorter passing period is we gave them the opportunity to use the drawstring backpacks. Well. Those would last about a week and the strings would break. And so we got to a point where we said, okay, well, you can use a small backpack. Well, we're to a point now where kids are carrying their entire locker worth of stuff in these giant Nike bags. And so that's not healthy. And on top of it, with all the stuff going on with school safety, it's not safe either because we can't monitor what's there. So in, in lieu of both of those issues, we're eliminating kids being able to use backpacks next year to go class to class. We're expecting them to use their lockers. I would say probably, it's probably well over half of our kids right now probably haven't been in their lockers. I mean, they've, they've moved everything into the backpacks and that's what they're living out of right now. So we want to move away from that, obviously. Get them using the lockers, get them paring down what they're carrying to classes, um, and obviously be able to maintain safety and not have something get carried into classrooms or backpacks. So. And I mean, that. That's so they can socialize, right? I mean, 
I don't think it's going to cause a problem of kids not being able to get to class. Yeah, They're used yeah. to the time schedule I mean, now. Using the backpack now, though, yeah. allows them to socialize more. And, and with the snack policy, yeah. it allows them to hide food, it allows yeah. them to do all this other stuff. So, you know, it's they're not being you know belligerent rule yeah. breakers but it's just it's gotten it was one of those things where we we kind of gave a little bit of a yeah. you know a bit of freedom with this and it's grown yeah. way more than we want to police every yeah. day i mean i could stop 420 kids and make them yeah. take stuff out of the backpack every day but it's not worth that fight yeah. so we're just going to go to a situation where you know starting beginning of next year they can bring everything to school and take it home from school in the backpack but we're going to use our locker and we're going to carry just so it's a little safer scenario. And the crazy thing is, you know, we thought the backpack would help with the laptop. They don't carry the laptop in the backpack. Everything else is there, and they carry their laptop. So, <laughs> um, so that, that that's kind of a moot point as we talked about taking care of those. The media center policy was just updated by Ms. Michael since uh, she's now in charge of all the media centers. So that's just a newer updated statement from her. Um, Page 20, to the 20 or 21, I think a couple of these additions bumped it down, but there's just a addition, keep going. Yeah, right here. Um, we wanted to, we, as we went through as a school improvement team, we didn't really have anything specifically in our discipline policy, policy talking about threatening or hurtful comments kids were making to each other and sort of, you know, how to be proactive on those things. And it's not a huge issue, but it's just something that we wanted in there. Um, you know, the, the new popular statement when somebody gets an argument is, hey, go kill yourself. You know, so it's not funny. It's not something that's that's been, you know, that we've let go, but it's something that we wanted to have a statement in writing in our handbook to be able to address with kids and address with parents. And, take care of. Like I said, it's not a, a huge deal, but it's something we felt strongly enough about just making sure it was in there so we can address it if those things come up with kids when we're when the only interaction in school. So um, page 25's got addition of the soccer, addition of soccer as a sport offering. Um, and then if you go down to 33 and 34 uh, the past pages in the back, one of the things we didn't think about when we went to trimesters is we still gave them four quarters worth of passes rather than three trimesters, so that's changed. And then the very last page um, with our PLC process is the addition of a data chart. So this data chart, you scroll up just a little bit, breath, it'll stay there. What we're going to do is we're going to try to teach our kids at the middle school level how to calculate their GPA by plugging in their grades every 12 weeks so they can set grade goals, they can calculate GPA, know where they're at. Uh, we've got a, a box for our NWA, which is our local assessment, and then I-STEP scores so that we can have these conversations with our kids in our advisory groups about how they're doing. And then we left some area at the bottom for classroom formative assessment data for kids to plug in. So just basically giving the kids a place um, they have to have the, the handbook is the first section of their calendar agenda at the middle school and so they have to have this with them all the time in all their classes and so this is a place where we can keep track of data and have those data conversations with kids about how they're doing academically. So that's all we've got. Any questions? Thank you, Scott. Uh, sure. Um, you know, before I start, Mr. Boggs, I got to just uh, say two things really quick. Um, you know, one, I got to share a story. As you guys know, I'm like uh, doctor classes. I'm down in Ball State, and I do have uh, two uh, Warsaw people that I'm with in my classroom, part of my cohort. And of course, I have to hear all the time about Warsaw, Warsaw, this and that. But then this last Thursday, I was able to go down, and I, certainly I went into class and pumped up my chest because, you know, we have Lori Tilden Geiger. And that, me that was awesome. And I can't tell you how excited about it. She's our building and what an impact she's going to build. So that was awesome uh, to feel good about that. And then, uh, you know, uh, early on, too, I just want to uh, thank the board uh, for approving Gene Hurlmeyer. She's here tonight. Uh, she's awesome. Uh, you know, really, it's just a commitment to excellence. She really stood out amongst all the candidates, and uh, she's a proven educator. She's a proven coach. She's a proven athlete, 
and uh, it's just uh, really excited to build my team, uh, start having that, uh, bringing that to, to Canoe Valley, uh, Mr. Kreska, and now with Gina, we're, we're just really, really excited about uh, both of them and uh, them being here and uh, continue our commitment to excellence. So really, really, really excited about that. Okay, handbook stuff. Student first. Um, Let's go ahead and go student. Uh, that's where the majority of changes. Pretty much everything else you, 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 brought, you pretty much have already heard. Uh, the biggest thing that you're going to see is the, the schedule change that we went over. Uh, I think that was maybe board, last board meeting or two board meetings ago was a bell schedule. Um, really, the, the biggest change for us, and uh, you keep, keep going on down, these are just kind of, we had to rework the page numbers because there were a lot of changes. Really want to thank uh, uh, Randy and Chrissy and Scott for all their help and just really helping us align with the attendance and, and everything else. It's, it's great working uh, with them. They're, they're, they're fantastic colleagues. Um, the biggest thing, again, these are just really updates, keep going. The biggest thing is really when it comes to discipline, um, we wanted a range, right? Uh, a lot of times it would lump in discipline as, okay, this is your first offense, this is what's going to happen. Well, unfortunately, a lot of times, there is a difference and we needed a range as far as okay is this just going to be we're going to talk to you or do you need to be suspended um i think you passed maybe one mr Boggs will give us an example maybe up a little further is that right mr creston yeah i think uh, like the schedule was up a little bit yeah I think, if up, up, you'll uh, there, oh, there, yeah. That was the example <laughs> um, <laughs> you had it Keep going. There you go. Oh, there you go. So, like right there, so you see right there, what we wanted was a range. What we had before was, okay, this is going to happen to you. And, and, and you can see this, this little chart uh, for really all the discipline in the handbook. So, really, no reason to go over each and every one, but it's telling you the same thing again and again. And what this allows Mr. Kresk and I is have the ability to, to be able to say, all right, this is a little different than this situation, where before um, it really kind of pigeonholed us into, well, this is the first time, and so that means. We're just going to contact your parent. Well, there's a big difference. Uh, and then sometimes, too, uh, unfortunately, kids uh, will make several mistakes along the way. And then, you know, well, is that just my first offense or is this my second and third? So what it does is, is as administrators, it gives us the flexibility to be able to really uh, apply uh, those type of consequences when, when kids do make uh, poor decisions. So that's the biggest change that you're going to see uh, across the board along with the schedule. Um, keep going, Mr. Boggs. Again, I don't want to repeat the things that we've talked about. Uh, we updated, we are giving final exams. Uh, we certainly did that here about Burkitt. Um, we, we are adding uh, some younger kids into Burkitt as an option. Uh, that's not something we really want to do, um, but it has been a, it's something that we have done this year, so we just kind of clean that area up. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Boggs. Again, there's, there's nothing in here. I, I really believe a lot of just updating as far as sports and personnel, board members, uh, those kind of things, just just uh, going through there. I think we're pretty good. Um, really, again, the, the biggest difference is, is that adding that range of consequences. Uh, and one of those ranges, too, that we're going to implement is we're going to start having a Friday night school. Uh, we don't really have something that's got a lot of teeth and has proven to be effective. Obviously, the worst case scenario is we get a kid out of school. That, that, that's, that's not what we want. In school, a suspension is proven. Plenty of data that doesn't support that. It's not really effective. It's something we can use. The kids aren't in the classroom. So really want to get something that they're not going to enjoy. Uh, Friday night school uh, with Mr. Kreskin. I'll help him out too. Anyways, uh, so um, that, that, that's certainly a, a consequence that we added to the list. Again, there's your, there's your range of consequences again. Uh, we did add, the only other thing I can think of that we did add, uh, we are seeing the vaping, uh, and so we made sure to specify uh, vaping uh, in the handbook uh, for the students. So that's, that's really, Mr. Boggs, everything that we've covered, uh, or that, that we haven't covered with uh, Mr. Doms and uh, Scott and Percy, so going good. And really, again, all staff handbook was all updates, uh, just updating who our staff was and those things, and then included the uh, PLC piece that uh, you saw uh, from Mr. Backus. What did you say there about younger going to Burkett? Yeah, well, what we're seeing is, um, you know, you, you have a, sometimes the high school versus when you have an expulsion or, or what do we have, how do we use the alternative school? And so we've had a couple cases this year where we've had some young kids, which really they're, they're options because they have gotten themselves in, in some, some trouble. Um, the idea was, okay, are we going to expel these kids and, and, and bring them back, hopefully bring them back, or, or can we give them what is called a Form 16? What a Form 16 is, 
double secret probation. Uh, and what it does is it's, they agree that they've committed these crimes, they are counted, these are errors, and what a form system will say is that they uh, forego any other due process, that they've admitted them as long as we give them one more chance. And a lot of times, for us, that chance has been to go to Burke and a little bit younger. Uh, I think we have two freshmen and a couple sophomores, maybe two, and some, somewhere in there. It's not many. Again, it's not something we really want to want to do, but we also felt like this is an option versus just you know sign on. So this has really uh, really worked out well so far. Uh, both freshmen, uh, we do expect back. Uh, next year, so it was really an option like, okay, we'll go to Berkeley, let's keep your credits. And part of the deal was as long as you have your credits that you should have as in your freshman year, you can come back as a sophomore uh, back to the high school. And I, I think both students will be able to do that that we still were freshmen this year. So it's been a really good just alternative to expulsion. That's all I'm getting. Can you talk faster next time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you, you guys up here, I'll slow way down. <laughs> 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 he did. It was a softball. I had to knock it out. Well, thanks, Chad. All right, thanks, guys. item we have is the addition to the school board policy. The, uh, the members of the administrative team spent quite a bit of time talking about whether or not to bring an Aloxone administration and schools policy to the board for your approval. We spent uh, quite a bit of time researching it, talking to medical, medical professionals, and came up with the attached policy uh, that we'll go through here in a minute. Um, but what I'd like to do is bring that to you this month for discussion and back to you in May for approval. Uh, it is the desire, though, of the school corporation to prevent opiate-related deaths by making naloxone available in our schools. And you may have heard uh, there's another name for that. It's called Narcan. It's really the same thing, I believe. But the uh, school corporation wishes to obtain authorization for school personnel to administer naloxone in order to respond to a suspected drug overdose in the schools. So with that it said, um, I don't want to lose everything here. Yeah. This is the policy itself. And uh, I don't know that I want to go through it in too much detail, but uh, first of all it explains the purpose for the policy and then gives you some definitions of what a drug overdose is, who are considered emergency medical services personnel, uh, and then what naloxone is. There's some guidelines. Um, obviously, we have to have a corporation physician sustaining order to even have that in our schools, so we'll get that from Dr. DeGrosse. Uh, this talks about training, so anybody that wants to be, that wants to administer naloxone has to be trained. We'll have the uh, county health nurse or the health department come in and do that for us here in Kosciuszko County. We're looking at training our administrators and our nurses yet this year, and then next year we'll open it up to our entire staff, so anybody that wants to be trained can be trained, just like we've done with our AEDs and CPR, and those kinds of things. So if somebody gets into trouble and needs, uh, needs CPR, AED, naloxone, whatever, we've got people around that know how to do it and do it well. Hopefully we never have to use it, but uh, if we do, they'll have it and know how to do it. Uh, storage, we've talked about where we'd like to store that. We would have it in two places. Uh, one would be in the nurse's office, under uh, lock and key, obviously secure. And then also in our AEDs. And uh, we would have it there as well. So uh, two places that would be available to those who are trained to use it. Uh, the administration of naloxone, you can see there are some protocols there that would be used to administer it. Uh, indem indemnification. If there was an overdose in a, let's say, a basketball game, obviously we would have people trained to administer it, but there might also be people in the crowd, um, first responders, doctors, whatever folks that would also be trained to administer that. So if someone did that at one of our events, um, 
Well, it's, is there a reasonable means to, you know, that's something I'm looking at. Um, well, the school corporation would uh, shall indemnify and hold harmless any employee who administers naloxone in good faith to another individual experiencing an overdose. Um, and then the conditions for that. So, as long as you know, people are doing the right thing for the right reasons, they're going to be okay for doing that. I mean, we won't, they won't be in any legal trouble. Talks about parental notification if it's administered. And then that's the one I was talking about, non-employee administration of naloxone. Um, you know, we're, we're not putting any, anything in place here that would deter a law enforcement officer or someone else from administering that uh, if need be. So, would ask you to spend some time with that uh, between now and next meeting. And then we'll meet again, we'll bring it back to you for approval in May. You guys have any questions about things? I have one I can think of. Um, not knowing the, the procedure, what it does, but my concern I would have is if we, what if you misdiagnosed that person, they weren't really overdosed, and you gave that to them, what is the repercussions of that? It doesn't that? hurt them. It doesn't hurt them at all? Okay, that, no, I'm fine. That was that. one of our questions, <laughs> yeah. so I, mean, I think Scott yeah. had that question within yeah. our team, and Good we question. weren't sure what the answer was. We yeah. brought Tony, Tony Doyle in from the Warsaw EMS to talk to us about those things. He said you're not going to hurt anybody. Okay, that's, that's, that's So if you're asleep and I hit you with it, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, my question was also if we, you know, if we misadminister it to somebody, are we legally liable? And right. We're also told no under the Good Samaritan law. If you're, if you're trying it in good faith, there's no legal repercussion for that. So, yeah, we had some, quite a few questions that we weren't coupled with yeah, uh, doing this until we got answered. The biggest concern for us was not necessarily school as it was the number of activities, especially at the high school, middle school, the number of athletic events, the number of patrons we have come in for those things, and just having it available somewhere. In those situations, primarily, but you know, you never know with school what could happen either for, for kids. But there's a lot of traffic in and out of the building with with activities. So we're just going to do the high school, or it's going to be all, no, it's all, all the buildings. All the buildings. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think if, if it were just That's what thinking about students, it would be just middle school, high school. But the fact that we have a lot of community people in all the buildings, we felt like that's what we do. Okay, so we'll bring that back to you next month for approval. That's uh, all we have. Well, we'll move on to Cheyenne and Dylan. All right, well, we've got a few things going on at the high school right now. Uh, first of all, we've got the talent show coming up, I believe it's next week, and then Teacher Appreciation Week. So a lot of our student council members will write letters to all the teachers just to show a little appreciation. Uh, we've got ISEF testing coming up for, I believe, is it sophomores? Yep. Juniors, maybe? Yep. And then, uh, last but not least, we have the senior trip coming up, which they leave tomorrow for D.C. And then we got the ACA team competition tomorrow night, and the FFA banquet is uh, coming up pretty quick, and uh, uh, juniors and seniors are going to Grace College for a college and career fair tomorrow. And that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I guess this meeting's adjourned. Thank you.